All right, I'm going to spin class now. I'll be back later. I left a casserole on the counter, just set the oven to 400 and stick it in there for 30 minutes. Try not to burn the house down, and don't wait up for me. It's the Wine Walk on Penn Avenue. And that one jazz guy Rita likes is going to be playing at the Draft House. Emergency phone numbers are on the fridge, but I know you're going to forget, so just remember 911. I'm taking the Honda, so if you need to pick up stuff from the grocery store while I'm gone, no you don't. See you later, honey. I love you. <sighs> honey, did you say something? Honey, where are you at? Honda CRV, the official car of those parents in the neighborhood who are so straight laced that everyone's convinced something freaky has to be going on behind closed doors. But no, just two people who love their son enough to keep the Honda CRV gassed up so that he doesn't lose money on every Uber fare. And hey, Honda CRV may not be the greatest car, but you know what is great? A parent's love. Because there are very few people in the world I pity as much as those who grew up under the roof of parents whose love was conditional. You're not taking a gap year, Debbie. By the time you get to college, all the good husbands will be taken. Look, Debbie. I can't make choices for you, but if you're going to be polyamorous, you can't come around here anymore. Your mother's heart can't take it. <sighs> okay, okay, so the Honda CRV is an utterly toothless vehicle for the suburban types whose favorite part of bedtime is the three hours of TikToks before their eyes get tired. The idea that you could get any thrills from this car is so far removed from any semblance of reality that you might as well go live on Mars with Dr. Manhattan. You spend so much time waiting for this to do more, to show some semblance of being a Honda underneath it all, that it just becomes tedious, like an unskippable cutscene before the hardest boss in the game. And yet, I wouldn't exactly say it's a bad car either, because let's be real. Not everything needs to offer white-knuckle thrills, or even passing interest. It's not the Honda CRV's job to excite you, any more than it's my job to wear a rubber anytime I go out with your mom. So let's get into it. Why is this car so normal, so achingly regular? And why is that not a bad thing? Because realistically, by the parameters that I've set up, I should be laying into this car. And yet... <sighs> I'm the Roman. This is Race to the Bottom, and we're still looking for the worst cars the internet has to offer. Today, we'll be doing my friend John's 2014 Honda CRV to see if it fits the criteria. But first, a word. The lower part of my body is ugly and pale. And the giveaway for this Subaru WRX STI ends this Wednesday. Click on the link in the description or go to go.getentertowin.com slash regular cars. The way you enter is buy a mug or get a digital download and you're automatically entered to win. The giveaway ends this Wednesday. Thank you so much for supporting regular car reviews. You're sending us to Melbourne, Australia and uh, update on the trip. We have some tentative dates. I think we're landing in Melbourne on November 4th, 2024. We'll see you out there. Uh, events for where the RCR car meet is going to be in Melbourne, we have yet to decide that, but thanks to these giveaways, we are traveling internationally. Anyway, back to you, Nick. Used to be a Honda bro, then I got wet at 24. Gonna drive this till the kids are grown. No! You don't make lemonade with the Honda CRV. The Honda CRV is the car you drive when life doesn't even bother giving you lemons in the first place, because life is sitting in that comfortable little nook where nothing is really happening, good or bad. It's like living in a state of complete and utter neutrality at all times, because what could possibly excite anybody about this car. This has been around since 1995, and I can tell you right now, it probably wasn't even in the top 25 things to come out that year. <laughs> hey, you reading that? 
Yeah, well, you don't have to pause, but pause. Yeah, yeah. and that's just off the top of my head, mostly. Of course, while the CRV was born in 95, just narrowly being edged out by the RAV4 as the arguable father of modern crossovers, get at me in the comments, America didn't get the CRV until 1997. And I'll tell you right now, it would have even less of a chance at top 25 that year. Yeah, I, this is utterly subjective, to an embarrassing degree. Like, we get it, man, you grew up in the 90s, you can stop talking about it at any time. I know. But for every legitimate grievance someone has for wanting to hear less about your childhood, they're filled with 20 other bad takes, like, Why do you eat boneless wings? They're just chicken nuggets. Yeah, and what of it, Carl? You put mayo on spaghetti and don't use turn signals. I don't want to fucking hear it. But for everything that I could say about the Honda CRV, I'm going to tell you one thing. Well, before I tell you a whole bunch of other things, it's an utterly fascinating car. Because it offers the kind of dichotomy that should be studied in business school. It's so bland, an infant could safely ingest the trim pieces, but it was successful, wildly successful even. Still is, really. But in 2014, the model year of this CRV, Honda surpassed 3 million lifetime units sold. For a time in the early 2010s, this was the best selling SUV domestically. Full stop. This thing swept the hearts and minds of the public like you would not believe. Or maybe you would believe it. I'm not in your brain. I don't know. But it was successful beyond imagining. Even as you wonder what you're missing about it that everyone else is seeing, this is the everything, everywhere, all at once of cars. But to treat its success as a mystery would be to ignore what actually made this worth getting in the first place. It's an SUV that drives like a sedan, while being more practical than one. It offers more room, greater versatility across different driving conditions, and comparable, if not better, fuel economy to a 2014 Honda Accord, making 23 City and 31 Highway to the Accord's 21 City and 31 Highway. So you can see how this fourth generation model would be popular, particularly in a post-cash-for-clunkers world. It was affordable, hovering in the low to mid-twenties for a base model, with reliable build quality that holds up well ten years on. Case in point, max towing capacity is around 1,500 pounds. That's enough to avoid having to get something larger if your hauling needs are substantial enough to need a hauler, but not substantial enough to warrant a pickup truck. It also handles surprisingly well. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be all that surprised, but this grips the road and corners better than some sedans I've driven. No slip and slide feeling, where you ease on the brake and pray. There isn't the same sense of lag and stagnation I felt in some of the other SUVs I've done for Race to the Bottom. It's a self-assured kind of car that's accessible both to confident drivers and, I would imagine, to people who are learning the ropes. In that sense, it really is a car for the whole family. But, at every turn, I'm struggling to find anything truly compelling here. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Sammy. I completely forgot oh, about no. that. Oh, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's the future in 2014. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's a compact disc, digital audio text. Oh, okay. It's just the little warning thing not to put it, use it as like a, a tray, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is just kind of absurd. Unto Do not itself. use to, it is not the stash and the dash. Do not use to hide handguns. Well, it's yeah. like one of those common sense things, but they have to put on there anyway yeah. to cover their ass, like not right. eating a silica gel packet. Right. It's not really a trick. The only hidden parking feature in the interior is that it's got the um, observe the kids mirror here. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> mm. I mean, no parent who threatens that actually ever wants to turn the car around because it's just a whole bunch of... Well, unless they actually don't want to go on the trip they're going on. Honda CRV. Oh, nice. My DoorDash is here. It's fine if you just want to go places, but it leaves a lot to be desired if you're looking for something memorable. It's a boring car. With a capital B.
because it's representative of a time in one's life where boredom is preferable to the excitement of uncertainty. It's automotive Ativan. I mean, what can I really say? Now, 2014 was the last year before the big refresh where a lot of the components were redesigned, and this got a CBT. For the most part, 2014 offers you reduced weight, longer gearing, and a 2.4 liter inline 4 making 185 horsepower and 163 pound-feet of torque matched to a 5-speed automatic transmission. And look, it's enough. It's enough for the rote practicality of such a domesticated driving experience because really, there's no separating this from its practicality. For a car whose name stands for Comfortable Runabout Vehicle, this 4th gen model is pretty much what the name implies. Real-time all-wheel drive, seating for 5, vehicle stability assist, motion adaptive electric power steering, and ride quality as stable and unsurprising as a good marriage ought to be. But again, you cannot get around the appliance-like function here. For as dependable as it is, I can imagine growing to resent having to drive this every day, if for no other reason than that it reinforces how the days just seem to run together. A collection of similar experiences blending into a week that turns into a month that begets a year. And you've been driving this thing for so long that its aesthetic actually starts to look strange. As if it came straight out of the intro to modern Honda design syllabus. A bulbous look with rounded edges and soft features like someone put four wheels on a misshapen raisinette. Of course, its crossover layout means we're aiming for the middle-class fences here, so seats fold flat because modern drivers have the same needs as a woman who just wants her dresses to have pockets. People love storage. I mean, I cannot express this enough, and it's something that a lot of people that I come across when I ask them, hey, what brought you to this guy? I mean, that's literally what I ask in my interviews for everybody who comes along for RCR. It's like, what brought you to this car? And a lot of the time, it tends to be storage capacity. I needed more room, which makes sense, you know, especially when you have a family. But even when you don't, I mean, how many people do I know who've gone to swap meets and craft shows and conventions and other events where it wasn't just about fitting more passengers, but fitting more supplies, more material? It's about more than just going to the grocery store, you know what I mean? So people are going to get down with this car because it's got room, but it's not enormous. I mean, if you're really about that life, you could probably live in this if you really wanted to try. I, I mean, you wouldn't live well, but there's room enough here to start a YouTube channel where you post videos of your nightly routine prepping for bed in the CRV you call home as you settle in at the Cracker Barrel parking lot cover up all the windows, plug in a hot plate, and make top ramen to a six-figure audience. And then you do it all over again the next day, or maybe it's the weekend and it's time to take a hike up the trail. This may not be as adventure-optimized as a dedicated Frontiersman SUV might be, and yet I'd still say it's adventure-primed, you know, it's adventure-capable. It's just not going to be a part of the activities in the way it would have been if it had that sweet picnic table add-on. No, this just gets you to the adventure. I mean, I suppose you could off-road this if you really wanted to, but it just seems like something that this wasn't really designed for. It will take you to where you need to go, and then it takes you back to safety once the adventure is done without ever really factoring into the events themselves like the Eagles in Lord of the Rings. I guess the worst thing that I can say about the Honda CRV is that it's so completely forgettable that it could be argued one never truly drives it at all. You just sort of arrive at your destination with no working knowledge of how you got there, what you were even there to do, or why you have blood on your hands and a stranger's cell phone in your pocket as the world turns black around you and all memory of hostile encounters bubble away like sea foam on the shore. You're left to piece together the fragmented embers of a burned experience you don't remember to figure out how many times this has happened, how much carnage you've left in your unwaking state, and seek penance in the redemptive light of a brand new... Oh, that's right, I was here to pick up my prescription.
So John's model here sits at around 56,000 miles or so, and so you're not really going to run into any mechanical shortcomings here. I mean, really, the only thing wrong with it is that the antenna doesn't always work. It's aftermarket because the OEM one got ripped off in an incident. As John tells me, when it came time to go looking for a car, his wife had her heart set on heated seats, but not leather seats. They had to be cloth, with AC vents for the rear passengers, and I imagine more room for the rear passengers too. So they landed on this, and they named her Jean, because she thought of this as her mom Jean's car. But then the kids went off to college, and Mama wanted something cooler, because even soccer moms have standards. And John ended up with this after his rally cross Mazda 6 crossed that rainbow bridge. So now John drives this for the time being. And who knows for how much longer. I know myself well enough to know that while this isn't a terrible car, it's something that would easily wear on me sooner rather than later because it's just so there. But how fair is that, really, to resent something for doing exactly what it was made to do and nothing more? Maybe this is what John needed. Maybe it's what we all need, you know? For crying out loud, I drive a 2002 Toyota Camry because I was sick of having cars break down on me and being broke all the time because of it. Funnily enough, when I had a Kia Rio with no power steering and I needed snow tires, John was the one who kicked in for him. He just had a bunch of snow tires laying around. It was like, but here you go. And I'll always be grateful for that, even though I ended up burning out the clutch on the thing not too long after he gave me those tires. Ugh, life. But I really liked that manual transmission, for what it's worth, as I continue to shoot my credibility in the foot. But, I mean, it's all in good fun, you know? It's, excitement is great, right? But you know what's really cool? The glorious simplicity of consistent, unbothered operation. There's real joy in that. Or there can be. A boring life doesn't have to feel like a wasted life. I mean, life as it is, is like trying to get through infinite jest. You keep hearing it's great, and in places, it absolutely is. But the central theme seems to be confusion, and only getting what you want sometimes, and clinging to the promise that it gets better if you just keep wading through it. And yet, here's the thing. That attitude is going to keep you low forever. Forever! You can't look at life as something that has to be exciting, that has to give you what you want, or even that it's something that should give you what you want. I'm still dealing with that, of figuring out that, like, life doesn't really owe you anything. I've always known it intellectually, but it's another thing to come face to face with the reality that maybe things aren't always going the way you want them to go, and that's okay, because we're not meant to have control over every single aspect of our lives. We're just meant to be able to have the freedom to pivot and to soldier on as best we can, because we're fallible creatures, we're humans, and we're spinning on the same rock together, and... Damn it, like, take my hand and let's do this because nobody should have to do it alone. Ugh, where was I? Oh yeah. The way to get the most out of life is to take what life gives you and figure out how to fit it into a workable design for your own happiness. Whether that means drinks with the boys every Tuesday, uninterrupted football on Sundays, or tickets to WrestleMania to hopefully see Cody finish this story, and by God, he better. Don't take a boring, simplistic life for granted. Boring always means there's potential for more. But excitement all the time is never being satisfied to just stand still to take in the moment, to appreciate, to recognize that while life is big moments, the great link of smaller, quieter ones are just as important. The Honda CRV is a boring car. But as I've said before, and will doubtless say again, boring does not have to mean bad. Would I buy this car? No, I already have a Camry. But would I recommend buying this car? Yes, actually. If you're looking for something simple, something comfortable, reliable, and consistent, something decently affordable, then this is exactly what you'd want. Just don't grow to resent it for doing exactly what you wanted it to do. Mm, the 
sound of earth dreams. Okay, so it's been a little while since I've done the final rankings because, well, I mean, Freddy's didn't make the bottom five. But did the Honda CRV make the bottom five? Well, let's go over what the previous standings currently are. Right now, winning the race to the bottom is the Nissan Sentra. Yes, this is a dub in because somehow my brain blanked and said Toyota Sienna. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm losing my mind today. At number four is the GMC Sierra. <laughs> it was like, it's what everyone says the Millennium Falcon is. I think I might have used that line before, but it really did feel like a bucket of bolts at times. I, I mean, but those guys were absolutely fabulous. I loved hanging out with them and they were really cool. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Number three, the Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. It's still bad, just not as bad because worse things have come along. So it's a little bit closer to being knocked out of the bottom five entirely, like the Ford Escape was. At number two is the Hyundai Tucson Hybrid, which... Sort of like this was just boring and, you know, eh. And at number one, for the one that I liked the most out of the bottom five, was the Kia Forte GT. Now, will the Honda CRV actually make it onto this list? And after a lot of deliberation, no. No, it won't. But I imagine, you know, my criteria is going to evolve over time as I do more of these cars. I'm coming up on the 10th car for Race to the Bottom, I think. Well, soon enough I will be. So that's it. This is still your bottom five. It hasn't changed. And the Honda CRV remains free from landing on this list. I'd like to thank John and Sam for coming out to film this car and for just being really cool guys. And if you think you have a car that can win the race to the bottom, send an email to regularcarstheroman at gmail.com. That's regularcarstheroman at gmail.com. Right now, we can only really accept submissions from people in the Northeast who are willing to drive to our area in southeastern Pennsylvania. But... No matter where you're from, just send an email, and maybe in some future point when we're traveling, we can work something out. Or if you're willing to come from a farther distance, like, just let me know, you know, because I'm looking to continue doing this, and I really want to find a car that is just got no redeeming qualities to it whatsoever. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching the show, supporting RCR, supporting Race to the Bottom, and just know that you're appreciated genuinely and authentically appreciated. Have a great week. Honda's driving right by Honda CRVs They're driving right in front of me Why isn't she here? Supposed to get the kids in noon I left like five messages Hope she'll be round here soon Said she wouldn't mess with Davey after the last time around, gone on free tablets, what was that sound? And I'm thinking, Honda's driving right by. Man, I'm proper smashed I am, in the daylight. And I'm thinking, Honda CRVs, they're driving right in front of me. Can't see straight, forgot how to walk. Why is this accent so bad, forgot how to talk. Honda CRV, was it a blur? Click menu, check message, could it be hers? And I'm thinking, Honda's driving right by. This parody's too obscure, they said. It's just for the YouTube. Honda CRVs, they're driving right in front of me. <laughs> I'm so bad at accents, man. Took me a minute to remember that Honda's, they put their, their hood release way down on the corner. Yeah. Oh. It's a side pull. It nope. Oh. It's down by your left foot. On oh, the that? ins on the inside. No, that's your emergency oh, brake. Yeah. That's your parking brake. There we go. It's oh. it's down by there. It's it's one of those look down, turn in, turn up, turn your head over. Other uh, and it's always the other way. Oh, it's always the other way. It's on the inside of the panel. You see the picture of the car with the hood up? Still no? Still no. Still no. Still yep. no.
It was a fucking scavenger hunt. Can can you find the? Uh, I feel like I'm looking for the clitoris. The, the uh, yeah. The fuel door. Oh uh, yeah, it's right there. All right, it's literally three inches from there. I'm getting out. Fuck me. Still didn't see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Takes there. took me ex took me longer to find it. Yeah. What a pain in the dick. That. Why would you put it there? I don't know. Just. I guess I guess so you don't accidentally open it because that happens with Toyotas, especially that one over there. The hood release and the fuel door release are the same motion with your hand and they're right next to each other. Mm -hmm. One's black, one's body color. Ah. Understand. 